How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be making a grainy shadow 3D text effect using Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. So let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator. I'm using a canvas more landscape like this. It doesn't really matter though. I'm going to start with creating a just normal text. And what we're going to use actually is Futura Bold because that was kind of the vibe that I was on the project I was working on. I want to keep it consistent. Let's do negative 25 kerning. This doesn't really matter though. You can use whatever font you want. This is just what I used last time. So I figured I'd keep it like that. So for this, I'm going to do grain, whoa, grainy shadow text effect. Feel free to use one word, two words. The three might get a little hectic, but should work out. From there, we're going to bring this kerning down a bit, or this uh, letting down a bit, sorry. Um, probably somewhere right about there. Let's actually bring that in a little bit more. You don't want too much space in between there. 105 should be fine. I'm just going to center this with the align tool. If you don't have that there, go to window, align, it should pop up. All right. Now from here. I'm going to choose a color for now. I'm just going to choose this basic yellow, something like that. And what we're going to do is copy this command C and then command F to paste in front. From there, we're going to grab this one, make it larger, something like right about there and then move it up a little bit like so. Then you want to grab the back text and make it black. This works best with black, um, but you can use other colors and we can change the background on the next step. So the more that you make this front text larger than the back text and the farther away you move it on the up and down, the more drastic the effect's going to be. So with this next part, I'm just going to move this over here and keep that version, copy that, scale this down and expand all of this. All right, next step, you're going to grab the blend tool, click on the front text, then click on the back text. This creates a blend and you double click into here. We'll do specified steps. And I'm going to do a hundred. So you see, we already have this effect kind of going on and this is the start of it from here. What I like to do is I always make another copy. So I have a version from each step of the way. So if you hold alt and drag, create a copy. We're going to expand this and we're going to ungroup it and we want this front piece to be separate from the rest of it. So these are all separate. So what I'm going to do is grab this front piece and lock it real quick and then grab all of this and do a command G. So now we're separate and that stuff's together. Unlock everything. It's okay. Now the next step is going to be in Adobe Photoshop. So I have a similar document in Photoshop, except it's black. What we're going to do is we want to bring this stuff in as separate objects. So we'll grab the back piece first, command C, come over here to Photoshop. We're going to do an edit, paste special, paste in place. Make sure it's a smart object. We're going to do the same for the front now. We just want those to be separate layers in Photoshop. There we go. If there's any discrepancies in how this is lined up, just go back to where it should be. Line it up like so. All right, now that we have the two different layers, this is where we can kind of get the stylistic part of this effect down. First step is go here and get a curves layer. And so the reason this works with the black is because it fades to the black. So I figured this out is the this goes lighter obviously, but the darker you go in this curves, the more faded the effect becomes and it starts to fade out. If you see, it's kind of like a gradient. You can go all the way here to where it's pretty much nothing anymore. And this is where I kind of discovered this trick and I thought it was cool and I'm sure there's multiple ways to do it, but this is just what I found useful and not super hard. So I want something right about there. And then from there, what we're going to do is grab this stuff, group it, create a copy with command J and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. 
and then we're going to go to filter noise add noise and so this is just depending on how much you want the grain to be and you can also add the noise just to the back if you want that i want to do six something subtle like that and then the finals will go in with some texturizing i'm going to head over to my hue and saturation real quick and just adjust this to a little bit more orange kind of like that the last step is i want to add some textures i'm going to be using a black market copy scan texture as well as a dust one i can link uh, some of the dust ones below the copy scan one you can get it on black market website or there's tons of other photocopy textures online let's drag both these in this first one put there copy scan scale that up for the copy scan, we're going to throw it on screen at about 50%. And this last one, we're going to throw on light in about 10%. Let's do 20. There's pretty much the final effect. And like I said, if you want to use different colors, make sure to change the blend on Illustrator to a different color uh, in the background text. And then you can use different colors for this to blend that into the background. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. And if you want the project file, head over to Patreon and you can download that right there. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.